Yeah. Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening to the Town of Stallworth and Public Hearing Agenda. It's scheduled for 5.15, it's about 5.25 p.m. right now. We're a little bit late because of technical difficulties. So we apologize for that. <coughs> um, I just wanted to read out this for anyone who might want to call in to lodge a um, uh, comment regarding the, the development. For any and all inquiries regarding this application, please call 1-855-453-6958. 1-855-453-6958. And the access code will be 617-1659. 617-1659. And please note, this is a virtual meeting due to the state of emergency declared by the province of Nova Scotia on March 22nd, 2020. So I'll call the meeting to order and ask for any changes or additions to the agenda. If not, can I have a motion to approve it, please? So moved. Move. Moved by Councillor Knight, seconded by Councillor Pence. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried unanimously. Thank you. So item three is the uh, application for site plan approval, PQ properties of 25 Bunker Hill to develop a four unit townhouse. Does the clerk want to read off the uh, correspondence received so far? Yes, so we received uh, a correspondence from um, Eddie Ar Allard dated March 20th, 2020, town council to whom it may concern. I am writing to object to the plan departments being built near my property. I don't believe there is enough space on the lot for the development or in the neighborhood for the increased traffic. We have all seen these apartments being built around the county in poorly chosen locations and destroying the comfort, looks, and values in their areas. Shouldn't there be more rules about where these developments can go? Please consider looking at this issue and making sure these types of projects can't just go into every empty space in town. Uh, this is also from George Ed Allard. I am writing to appeal the recent decision to allow a four unit townhouse dwelling be placed at 2325 Bunker Hill, Stellarton. The lot sizes of 23 and 25 combined is less than 70 feet wide, which is not large enough to support two units this size. Also parking will be an issue. In the recent past, requests to purchase said individual lots were rejected to place single dwelling bungalows or garages on, with residents' purchases being informed the lot alone was too small to place a bungalow on. How now is it possible to place a four-unit townhouse okay? Most houses on Bunker Hill with the same lot size has only one house, which is what the town permitted. And that has been received via um, mail. We also received, I think, a part of the package from another resident, um, Ken Brown. Yes, that was part of Roland's uh, uh, memo, and I can certainly read that. I am sending this email to you to let you know, let you and anybody else know that I am totally against a four unit building on two lots that that just big enough for a small house. Why don't these people or these planning commissions make an area somewhere like vacant land and let these people that want to build in other people's backyard with these units that attract too many people and the trash and garbage that go with it. It's bad enough to live in a town that is scared of landlords to tell them and the people that live in them to clean up or tear them down. I have three of these units behind me and all I see is trash and garbage. The landlords don't care as all they are worried about is money. As an example of trash was a mattress that sat in the bushes, my hedge that runs along a fence that has nothing but trash in it around it that stayed there for over a year, and the man that owns them mowing the lawn every week and just leaves it there. If they want to build something on it, build a nice house like the ones beside it and sell it to get their money back. The lady that has a nice red home beside it this will make her home worthless and these people don't care. Maybe we should buy land beside their places and make rentals and see what they think. This will most likely bring more younger, low income people in the area to an area with a lot of older people that don't need any extra activities. I know there is most likely nothing any of us can do when it comes to certain companies and politics in this town, but I along with 
a lot of neighbors don't want a building like this there. Thank you for your time. Ken Brown, 28 Kirk Avenue. So that's all the correspondence we received? To my, from, my, uh, from my knowledge, yes. And I know that we do have someone on the, on the phone. Page Would you like to speak? Paul, was there something you, you wanted to add? No. Nothing he wants to add, okay. Okay, how does council feel about it? So let me ask a couple of questions, uh, if I may. Uh, so we're trying to determine uh, if a four units is uh, eligible to go to that lot so the resident and how many how many did we get three or four three. you got two you had two objections two objections okay. two objections yes so uh roland from the two objections both of them seems to be on the same page saying that the lot is way too small how does uh, that yeah. go ahead so uh it, it does the lot uh, abide by our bylaw for building a four unit? Uh, yeah, yes, it does because what uh, P PQ Properties did, they actually purchased two properties and consolidated them to make one larger lot. So the, the proposal is on, it actually measures uh, a frontage of 67 and a half feet uh, with a depth of about 120 feet. Okay, so 67 and a half feet is acceptable from a bylaw perspective. Uh, for a four unit, correct? Well, for a townhouse by site plan approval, yes. Okay. So the perception is it's too small, but it's according to the bylaw, it is not. But you got to remember, this is a site plan approval process. So that site allows... plan, Simon. Site plan is the key word here. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 not it's it's not an as of right development because as of right in an R2 zone you could only get up to two lots. However, if you go by site plan approval, the development officer can issue an approval for uh, as up to as many as four through a site plan approval process. So uh, this is what we're going through now. But because there were objections launched, that's why this appeal hearing is being held because a couple of local residents appealed it. Understood. But what I'm trying to figure out here is. The residents are saying that the frontage is too small. So uh, we're saying that it is uh, almost 70 feet. That's uh, correct. Okay, so 70 feet from a bylaw perspective, uh, is that acceptable? I'm assuming it's acceptable because you were going to say yes to it if there wasn't for the two objection, correct? That, that's correct because uh, the, the, the layout of the building is such that uh, see, the lot itself goes between Bunker Hill and Rutherford Street. So two units would face Bunker Hill and two units would face R uh, Rutherford Street, and they'd have a common wall at, at the rear of the units. So from, from one side, it's only two units. So theoretically, he could have done two duplexes if he wanted to. Yep. Uh, the, yeah, the, 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 only, the only thing is, uh, in, if they were separate buildings, he wouldn't be able to get the rear yard requirements of 20 feet between, because then you at about 40 feet between the two different units, one that would have faced Bunker Hill, one that faced Rutherford. But this way, uh, he can get four units together as a townhouse with two facing Bunker Hill and two facing Rutherford. Okay. Uh, so the other question is, uh, did that neighborhood, uh, how many other uh, multi-unit residential uh, buildings are there? Because I know there's a lot of duplexes in that area, isn't there? You're right. There's, there's a lot of duplexes. I guess the only other multi-unit that's in the immediate area is also the one that, uh, that PQ Properties built a couple of years ago. They have, I believe, it's 10 apartment units on top of the commercial uh, space. Okay, so we have a 10 apartment unit building. We have a lot of duplexes. So the majority of it are uh, uh, multi-unit residential. It's not a single one. Uh, yeah, but, but that area mostly, yeah, there are single dwellings and there are also a lot of semi-detached duplex dwellings as well. So a lot of one and two unit buildings. A lot of two unit buildings, okay. Uh, 
so the reason I'm asking for it is I understand what the residents are asking for, but at the same time, you know, I am against uh, red tape. Uh, and, you know, uh, when an opportunity comes up to our town to, uh, to increase uh, uh, the tax base for our town and to create a brand new structure, which, by the way, is going to cost, uh, uh, it's not going to be cheap. And whoever's going to rent it is going to not going to rent it for three or four hundred dollars. It's going to be a lot more expensive than that, and that's going to be an ex addition to tax uh, to our uh, tax base. Uh, and I don't really see a problem with it, to tell you the truth, uh, especially that the majority of the residents in that area are multi-units. If the majority of the area was just single unit, single dwelling, then I can understand that reasoning. But because the majority of the houses around that area are multi-units, two duplexes, 10 units, uh, I'm, I'm inclined to say uh, yes. And that's my opinion. Thank you. I wouldn't say the majority are duplex in that area. A lot of single dwellings. And the 10 unit one that uh, Roland referred to is on 4th Street, the back of the, the building there. So it's a little bit removed from that area. I am. Um, <clears throat> I'm, uh, uh, I'm not in favor of uh, the development. I feel that uh, you had neighbors in that area that lived there all their lives. Uh, they put up with a lot uh, and they're frustrated and uh, they don't want a four unit in their, in their backyard and uh, I can understand that. And I have to agree with the neighbors in that area. I was down. I was down to uh, see the uh, complex uh, when Gary invited me to go down and look at the um, area. Uh, there was three. We did our, our our spacing. He was in his vehicle and I was in mine. But we went down and there was three of the uh, residents come out. And that area is a residential area. It's not highly apartments. There's duplexes there, but there was duplexes there years ago. And uh, that area was an older area in town. Some of the older houses have come down. They've started to re uh, reconstruct the area and it's become a nice area to live in. And uh, to put a complex like that in there, if you look at the plot plan, you've got 15 feet on either side of the building to the side. And this here big uh, complex in there is not, in my opinion, uh, conducive to that area. And I, I'm not in favor of putting a, a four unit there. So let me ask you this, uh, uh, Councillor uh, Pence and Councillor Knight. So uh, following that logic, we are not going to approve almost any four unit uh, dwelling in the entirety of Stellarton, if somebody objects, because the majority, 99.9% .9 of the dwelling in Stellarton are all a single dwelling or a uh, duplex to to you're years. surmising that Simon surmising I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just reading between the lines that's that's your surmising we, we either have to be consistent in our approach or what we're doing right now is we're picking I, and choosing. I, no I I think it's case by case I think Simon. We, it's uh Gary, it's not please uh, finish, please, please. Gary Gary please let me finish so what I'm reading from this is uh you guys went down, talked to the residents, and established that you know there's two objections or three objections. Now we're gonna say no to a new development in town, which means that I'm okay with that if that's the case going forward, which means that in the future there will be no four-unit development in Stoughton because all of it applies would be the same. And if we want to apply this in this area, we're gonna apply it everywhere else. This is where I stand. Okay, what about Councillor Campbell? Well, I was down and I had a look at the area as well. I don't really think the area is big enough for four units. Um, I did speak to a couple of people down there. Um, and I, you know, I just feel that you'd be encroaching on, on the neighbors on either side to put a building of this size there. So um, I'm not in agreement with the four unit. Okay, thank you. So it sounds like we have um, three against and one four. Do we take it to a vote? 
um, we know we would just uh, wait until it's going to the council agenda and that's where you will vote on it and debate. Uh, okay. Right now it's just to hear any appellants or any issues or, or comments that the public would have. Um, Paige, is there anybody else on the phone that would like to speak? You're on mute, Paige. I don't know. If... Okay. No, we're good. Okay, so there's no other uh, no other people, uh, Your Worship. So. Okay, so I'll ask for a motion to adjourn, please. So move. Thank you, Councillor Pence. Meeting adjourned. Do we want to move right into the councillor? Yes. Yeah, we might as well. Okay. So welcome everybody to Town Installer and Council meeting, May 11, 2020. Uh, <coughs> Start time of 5.40 p.m. Delay slightly because of the um, public hearing beforehand. Uh, the agenda is in front of us all. Is there any uh, additions or changes to the agenda? Yes. Uh, can I make a report on the homecoming, please? Sure. So maybe we'll put that as 5H, homecoming report. Okay. All right. Uh, you, your Worship, could I order or, or add uh, Davies Day ceremonies too, please? Sure. Um, where do you want to put that on the agenda? Right after Brian, I guess. Okay, we'll put it not I under under number five then. Yeah. And I'm going to add um, a proclamation before business arrives for the minutes for World Lupus Day on May 10th. So that's going to be as soon as we approve the minutes. So move to approve the minutes as amended. Agenda, agenda first. Agenda. Sorry, approve the so move to approve the agenda. Thank you. Second the motion. Moved by Councillor Knight, seconded by Councillor Pence. All in the face, no saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, the minutes are next. They've been distributed electronically and part of the package. There's no errors or missions. Can I have a motion, please? So move as written, Your Worship. With the, with the uh, amendments. The amendments for the agenda, not the minutes. Sorry. <laughs> so it's a move by Councillor Pence. Do we have a seconder? I'll second it. Oh, by Councillor Penn, seconded by Councillor Campbell. All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried unanimously. Thank you. The next item is the World Lupus Day on May 10th. I want to read the proclamation. Whereas lupus is a global health problem that affects millions of young men, women, and children of all nationalities, races, ethnicities, genders, and ages worldwide. And whereas many physicians worldwide are unaware of symptoms and health effects of lupus, causing people with lupus to suffer for many years before they obtain a correct diagnosis and medical treatment. And whereas medical research efforts in, into lupus and the discovery and development of safer, more effective treatments for lupus patients are underfunded in comparison with diseases of similar magnitude and severity. And whereas people with lupus will face a lifetime of living with the unpredictable and life-changing health effects of this disease, and whereas there's a deep unmet need worldwide to educate and support individuals and families affected by lupus, and whereas there's an urgent need to increase awareness in communities worldwide of the devastating impact of lupus, now therefore be resolved on May 10th, 2020, it's hereby designated as World Lupus Day, on which lupus organizations around the globe call for increase in public and private sector funding for medical research on lupus, targeted education programs for health professionals, patients and the public, and worldwide recognition of lupus as a significant public health issue. So thank you for that. Can I have a motion to accept it, please? So moved. Seconder. Second. Moved by Councillor Knight, seconded by Deputy Mayor Campbell. All those in favor, not saying aye. Aye. Contrary aye. minded. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the presentation of the budgets, operation and capital. Brenda? No, oh, I hope we're not having te technical difficulties again. Yeah. Oh, can I you, hear you. Can there you hear you me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And where am I speaking into? Oh, right there. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm on the phone and I'm on Paige's headset. So my apologies. We, okay, we just, okay. So do I have your headset now? <laughs> okay, I've got Paige's headset. Here we go. Technology, don't we love it? Yes. When it works. <laughs> Good. Okay, um, so we're about to present the budget. Um, I am going to share my screen with you. 
tell me if you can see it. You yes. Are good? Yes. You can see it? Okay, yes. yep. right here? Okay. So this is the general operating budget um, for April 1, 2020 to March 31, 2021. As you can see, we'll start up here at the top with the assessments. As you can see, our residential assessments are total of 183.355 million. Our commercial assessments are 85.386 million with no change in the tax rate being $1.82 residential and 415 commercial. That translates to 3.3 million for residential taxes and 3.5 million for commercial taxes a total of 6.88 million. So that's the tax piece of the budget. So I'm going to scroll down now. And bring you to here. All right, so we're going to review. So this column was the budget for 1920. This is our projected actuals. We're not finished for 1920 at the moment. This is our projection. And budget for 2021, this is the column I will be reviewing. First line is assessable property taxes, which is what we've just reviewed, residential, resource, and commercial for 6.88 million, a slight increase over the prior year. Special tax agreements for 29,000, that's Alliant and Heritage Gas, calculation based on revenue, similar to prior years. The deed transfer tax, that's money collected and immediately remitted. You'll see the offset. So you see the 60 up here and you'll see the 60 down here. So it comes in and it goes out. Last year was high in, but also high out. No net impact to the bottom line. Grants in lieu of taxes for 190,624, similar to prior years, slight increase. Uh, this is the post office, the RCMP, Department of Mines, uh, and fire protection for NSCC. And the fire protection for NSCC has gone up um, with the changes in the building. Other revenue owned sources. This is a line that we always budget conservatively. It does include interest. So obviously in the current situation, we don't want to budget interest as high as maybe it has been in the past. This also includes dispatch services and record checks. The unconditional transfers. This is the equalization and the HST offset, both outside the control of this. Next line is conditional transfers. This includes our street crime unit funding, uh, student funding, and our community works program with a slight increase with the community works program. At, in conditional meaning that we have to spend money to get money, unconditional meaning we get it anyway. The internal transfers, 80,000 um, of that, or yeah, 81, 81 six of that is transfer from the water utility and 15,000 is a transfer from operating reserve. For a total of 8.122 million in revenue, a slight decrease over the prior year. We move on to expenses, legislative services, which is council at 111,000, slight increase over the prior year. Uh, generally, we the travel budget is uh, budgeted at $1,000 per person, and generally, council does not use that full amount for travel. General government services at 835,000. Mm -hmm. The increase over the prior year here is for election costs, marketing and communications, the heritage plan, and insurance. Police protective services, the slight increase, although we have a slight increase over last year, very similar to the previous year budget, but the increase relates to a full-time police chief as well as the contracted police officer increase. Fire protection of 486,000. That's lower, not for operating costs. Most of that decrease is the hydrant rental cost, which is a calculation based on prior year water actual expenses dictated by the UARB. Prior year water actual expenses are lower, therefore the hydrant rental fee is lower. That's the bulk of the reason for the difference between these two numbers. Transportation services at 8.8, so 1.851. 
this allows the increase from the prior year to this year. Again, fairly similar budget year over year, but the actuals, uh, we have a full-time engineering tech. There's the contracted increase. Uh, there's also an increase for insurance and for the Suico truck. Environmental services, there's only a 1% increase for solid waste and ERIC. The balance of the increase is for the REN, Regional Economic Network. Recreation services is showing a decrease over the prior year, and this is for a change in structure. Cultural services, this includes our library and community center and deans. We are lower than the prior year. The prior year had about $14,000 for hazardous cleanup in the library which we're not planning to repeat. Our financing costs have gone up considerably. In this amount is the additional debt for the snowplow and also a payout of an older debt. So there's a lump sum balloon payment in here that, that eliminates an older debt of the town for 702,000. Outside service providers for the town, this includes PBSC, the Wellness Center, Chad, homecoming, uh, we're at 338,000 budgeted, similar year over year. Outside service providers for the province at 917,000. This includes the school board, corrections, and the seniors housing deficit. And our school uh, costs go up because our, our uniform assessment has gone up. There's the transfer of the deed transfer tax, which offsets the revenue above and no internal transfers anticipated for the current year. The prior year includes some capital that we purchased and a transfer of the balanced operating reserve. So overall, 8.122498 million of expenses to balance 8.122498 of revenue. Any questions? Thank you, Brenda. Um, how much was the lump sum payment that we paid off for that loan? We're paying 188,000 and about 30,000 of that we would have paid anyway. So about 125-ish is the lump sum amount. Thank you. Any other questions for Brenda? Okay, hearing none, just say that I'd like to thank staff for the work they put into the preparing this budget for council's review. Um, we're very pleased the council be able to hold the tax rate again this year. Um, especially with we making that big lump sum payment, 125,000 and still hold the tax rate. I think it's really good news. The, not so good news, the, the revenue is kind of uh, flatlined a little bit, but uh, we have about a break even budget with no tax increase. So we're pleased we do that. Um, are we looking for a motion now? We will uh, do a resolution after the capital budget is presented. Thank you. I move that we accept the uh, budget. Okay, let me, let me continue on. I'll go on to the water utility first, maybe. Yes. We'll do it all in one motion. Yeah, right? we'll do it all in one. All right. Okay. Okay. So here is the water utility. So again, for the same period, April 1 to March 31, 2021. Again, the same format, the budget for 1920 projected and the budget for 2021. So overall metered revenue is consistent with prior years. Flat rate revenue also consistent with prior years. This fire protection, this is, this is the um, UARB calculation that we just talked about for the, on, on the fire protection side in general. This is a revenue item that's dictated by a calculation with UARB with this revenue comes from the town of Sellerton and the municipality of the county of Pitville. So the decrease there is simply because the expenses for the prior year are lower. Other is mainly interest and again, we're going to be conservative for interest in the current circumstances. Operating expenditures, the source of supply this last year was the cleaning of the reservoirs. Power and pumping, we're, we're projecting an increase. This is to allow for repair and maintenance. We were relatively low on repair and maintenance and power and pumping last year. And we'd like to make sure there's enough room just in case. So most of that 191 increase difference is related to an increase from maintenance. Purification at 435,000, additional budget for chemicals and water testing. Transmission and distribution, 192,000, again, allowing for unexpected repair and maintenance on transmission and distribution lines. Admin in general, small increase in there, but it's insurance, it's audit, and it's advertising. 
Depreciation is a calculation based on asset base. And the property taxes are based on a no change in the tax rate for the town of Sellerton. These are property taxes paid to the general fund. Total of 1.769 of revenue to a total of 1.442 of expenditures. We also have a transfer from depreciation. This is an approved amount that comes out of the water depreciation to help fund this principal and interest. The interest and principal charges, as you can see, are starting to decline because the debt is going down. Overall, we have a transfer from surplus to balance to zero of 116,000. But the water utility does have an operating surplus at the end of March of 2019 of 1.6 million. Any questions on the water utility? Okay, I'll keep going to the general capital fund budget. The general fund capital budget, $100,000 for the town hall building detailed design. 25 for the library boiler, 12,000 to repoint a wall of the town hall, 12,000 for fencing at the public works building, 10,000 for the town hall bell alliance system. For infrastructure, 35,000 for the sanitary flow meter and structure, 20,000 for McMillan curb, and 16,000 for the crosswalk lights at the a &W. Sidewalks, 21.7 for Stellar Street from Acadia Avenue to Jubilee. 20,700 Ford Street, Bridge Avenue to Foster. 8,800 on Acadia Avenue, South Ford to South McKay. 5,600 for Ford Street, Fairview to Claremont. For recreation, work on the Pleasant Street Park for 27,000. Playground equipment at River Street for 15,000. Public Works Equipment, the Lawn Tractor for 25. The Rundle Street, Victoria and Allen Avenue Infrastructure Renewal Project. This is subject to approved provincial funding. The sewer portion, which is the portion funded in the general fund of the project is 637,855 for a total of 991,655 per capital. How is this funded? Gas tax funding for 318,928. PCAP funding, this is assumes, were approved for provision funding of 318,928. Municipal Finance Court borrowing for 100,000 on the town hall building and general capital reserve for the balance, 253,800. Any questions on general capital? I'll continue on to water capital. Water treatment plant membranes, this is three membranes to be replaced at 195,000. Completion of the commercial water meters, 150,000. Completion of the East River shore channeling, this was started last year, the design work was done, done last year and this year it's the construction for 85,000. And again, the Rundle, Victoria and Allen Avenue project, this is now the water portion of the project for 660,460 for total capital of 1,090,460. How is this funded? Water depreciation fund for 760,230 subject to UARB approval and the PCAP funding if we're approved for 330,230. Any questions on water capital? Then that's it. Okay, so um... I'll, I'll do the resolution. Therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Town of Stellarton that the assessment for 2020-2021 is confirmed at 85,386,300 for commercial. Further, be it resolved that the assessment for residential is confirmed at 183,354,800. Further, be it resolved that the tax rates for 2020-2021 be approved at 182 per $100 of res residential assessment and $4.15 per $100 commercial assessment. Further, be it resolved as per the resolution passed by Council on April 14, 2020, regarding the waiving of interest due to COVID-19. Further, be it resolved that the operating budget for 2020-2021 is approved at $8,122,498. 
and further be it resolved that the capital budget for 2020-2021 is approved at 991,655. If I can get a I'll motion. Move, I'll move that resolution. I'll second that. Moved by Councillor Pence, seconded by Councillor Nice. Any further discussion? Okay, again, just like to thank staff for their efforts here and uh, all those in favor by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most Carrie Nancy, thank you very much. So I think we'll come ready to move on to item five. Um, five A is, or, or sorry, five is reports from staff. Five A is Chief Mark Hoback, Stellar and Police Service. Thank you, Your Worship, uh, members of council. Uh, you have my report in front of you uh, for the month of April. I really don't have too much to add to it. It was a very busy month for calls. Um, I would say several of them COVID related. Uh, resulting in six six charges under the acts and um, several warnings. Anybody has any questions for me? Yeah, Mark, I had a call on the weekend. I and I, you know, really, I couldn't answer the I couldn't answer the person, but maybe you can help me answer. Um, it was on an animal. Uh, they were worried about an animal being abused, and I didn't know who do they call in a case like that. Uh, in a case like that, we you, they can contact us, and we would have our uh, animal control officer John Fillier uh, follow up, um, and he can he he can make that initial assessment and then involve us if if required. But it can come through us initially, yes. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Chief, you said that there's a few calls about COVID nineteen related. Can you just expand a little bit on that? Certainly. Um, the calls, we had several calls, uh, unanimous, <laughs> anonymous calls um, of people in violation of the acts. Uh, they were followed up on by our officers and, and many of them were unfounded due to the time lapse between the, uh, the occurrence and then the time it was called in. Um, and several of them were related to some of the comments made by Dr. Strang in the media with recommendations for, um, recommendations for citizens rather than uh, strict mm -hmm. adherence to the acts. So when those come in, and for example, um, recommendation that you don't go for a drive on Sunday, that you, you stay home because you may go to gas stations or have contact with people. That was a recommendation that wasn't part of the act. So the calls we had on those were more of an education piece uh, for the citizens calling in to refer to the provincial, um, provincial website for information about uh, COVID related calls like that because they weren't really for us, they're not enforceable. It was more of just uh, suggestions rather than the act. So those were a lot of the calls we had. Um, I found that, you know, the officers, we started out with the education piece and then we moved to the enforcement. And honestly, there um, wasn't that much of a need for enforcement. I, I feel like the, the members of the, the citizens of the town were adhering to it. And I know most may have a story of where they may have seen some people together or maybe people in violation, but when we get the calls and follow up on them, they're either gone or we, we have them That's what we get there. Okay, thank you, Chief. Any further questions for the Chief? I will note that we had a police commission meeting last Thursday where the police commission reviewed the same report, so a lot of council is familiar with it already. Is there no further questions, do I have a motion, please? So moved. Most second. second. Moved by Councillor Knight, seconded by Deputy Mayor Campbell. All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried unanimously. Thank you, Chief. Um, 5B, Emily Lutton, Building Official Fire Inspector. Uh, good evening, Your Worship and Council. Uh, you have my report. We've been getting a little bit busier over the last month with permits and inspections, which is good. Uh, do you have any questions about the report? Council. I know so we have uh, one less outstanding order than last month, so that's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> okay, can I have a motion, please? So uh, I'd move uh, Emily's report as written, Your Worship. I'll, I'll second it. Moved by Councillor Pence, seconded by Councillor Knight. All in the face of my saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carry Nancy, thank you. Item 5C is Roland Murek, Acting Planning Development Officer. You're on mute, Roland. 
You lost him. Oh, he's on mute. There he is. Oh, there there I am. I'm okay. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, think you, uh, I think you all have my written report. I guess I'll just echo what Emily uh, said a minute ago in that uh, we are seeing a little bit of an uptick in terms of inquiries about permits. Uh, you know, not for new houses yet, but mostly for, you know, decks and sheds and swimming pools and that sort of thing. So uh, uh, probably, we'll probably have a slower year than usual because of uh, the situation that the world finds itself in. But uh, we are starting to get to see some encouraging signs nonetheless. Thank you. Any questions for the planner? Yes, Roland, uh, did you get any feedback back from any of the businesses that you've sent the uh, uh, cafe bylaw to? Uh, no, nothing uh, yet, Councillor Lawan. Okay, thank you. And the, Roland, the um, development permits on 32 Claremont and 38 Jubilee for accessory buildings, would that be the garage and stuff you just talked about? Uh, that's correct, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. No Thanks further you. questions, got a motion? So move. Second. Well, second. Oh, boy, Moved by Councillor Lawan, seconded by Deputy Mayor Campbell. All those in favor, by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried Nancy. Thank you. Thank you, Roland. Thank you. 5D, Fire Chief Michael Sullivan. Good evening, Your Worship and Council. Uh, you have our report from the month of April. And does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Chief. I'm just going to read some of your report out for the public, if you don't. So with the ongoing pandemic, members are practicing social distancing when possible on scenes. We have stopped responding to medical assistance calls unless requested by EHS. Members are required to wear all necessary personal protective equipment when responding. Eye protection, gloves, and N95 masks are provided to every member to carry in their personal vehicle. Also, we continue to house our turnout gear in our personal vehicle. And then I also want to read off that we are trying to limit the amount of foot traffic at the hall for the protection of our members and the rest of the community we serve. Therefore, all use of the hall has been restricted. Primarily one to two members of each assigned crew are completing the equipment checks each week. Thank you for those updates. We appreciate it, so does the public. Any other further questions for the chief? I'd move, uh, I'd move the fire department's uh, report as written, Your Worship. I'll second that motion, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Penn, seconded by Councillor Knight. All those in favor, saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried Nancy. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Uh, 5E, Paige Clark, Marketing Communications. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, my report's been submitted. Are there any questions? I'll just make the comment. I'm happy to see the fire department page is going to be part of our website now. That's a overdue addition, I would say. Um, the free online courses signed up for they're really good ideas. Especially the heritage tour that we're planning on doing, one of them seems like a really good fit for that, so thank you for doing that for us. Any further questions or comments for Paige? Okay, Aaron, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Moved by Councilor Knight, second by Councilor Pence. All those in favor, somebody saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried Nancy, thank you, Paige. 5F, Blaine Murray, Town Engineer. Good evening, Your Worship and Council. Uh, you have my reports as submitted. Uh, nothing too much to point out. I'd uh, just like to say that uh, our staff are back uh, at the full force the last couple of weeks and we're out and about. Um, do you have any questions? Again, yeah, I want to. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you go ahead, Dan. No, you go ahead, Councillor Pence. I said I wanted to read some of his report for public. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blaine, the only thing I was concerned about, I noticed last year we didn't finish all the town, uh, the cross, uh, some of the crosswalks. All the painting wasn't done in town last year. Is it going to be done this year? Completed? All the painting was done, Councillor. Hmm. Uh, there was a so a crosswalk that uh, on uh, down by the Umbridge Avenue that wasn't completed, uh, like a um, a landing area, I guess, successful landing area that uh, we didn't get finished this year or last year. I don't know if that's what you're referring to, or so is that going to be done this year? We can do that. That's going to be completed this year. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. So I just wanted to read out a couple of things regarding the COVID in the Public Works Department. Public Works not interact with the general public unless it is deemed necessary. Each instance will be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. All buildings that are shut down due to COVID-19 pandemic are being inspected each week to ensure there are no visual issues. I also want to inform the public of a stellar memorial rink. Staff removed all the trophies and requested memorabilia and placed them in the town hall, so in the town hall now. If anyone has any memorabilia they think that might be there, then call the town hall to see if we have it there for them. And the veterans memorial display, the big sign in the back, the 40 foot by eight foot high sign um, has been taken down, it's placed on the floor and they're looking for council direction what to do with it. Does council have any ideas or suggestions? I'm wondering oh. about the uh, multi-sports complex, if that's an idea or not. Uh, they, yeah. have, they have offered to take it up there if we want. How does the rest of the council feel about it? Sure. Well, I was thinking that we would hold on to it till we see what we're doing with that piece of land where the rink sits. Yeah, we don't. We, we don't have to. We don't have to mount it. We can just put it up there and just hold it. Oh, we can it. store it up there. That would be good. Yeah. Just store it. yeah. Uh, the, the, the memorial won't be. Uh, I just wanted to add the memorial is not designed for outdoor use. I think it'll. It's kind of paid. So. Oh. Could be in case, though, if we wanted to, I suppose. Possibly, yeah. Mm -hmm. be something that we'll have to look at. We can store it uh, for now and th until we figure yeah. out that. Right. Yeah. Right. So you have your direction there, I think, Blaine? Yeah, it may have to be dismantled to get it out. That's the only problem. And to drop it. Hopefully the Zamboni door might be big enough. It'll fit out it, but it's 40 feet long too, and it's extremely heavy and awkward. Um, and I'll have to get on a flatbed. Uh, it's long enough to carry it, I guess, so. And if we do decide to hang on a, at the um, multi-sports complex, will we need some uh, engineered drawings before we do that? Oh, you'd have to, yes, it, it's extremely heavy. You'd have to have a support structure to hold it, for sure. Okay. I don't know if the door is big enough to get in the soccer complex with it. I don't know how it is. It's a garage door, uh, Blaine. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. Any further questions for the engineer on yeah. the um, his report? Yeah, I have one more thing there, Blaine. I was going to mention to you. Remember last year we talked about uh, the parking stalls on Ford Street. Have we done any more on that? The trap, yeah, the parking plan. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's all ready for council to review whenever they want to review it. Okay. In the committee of the whole? It could be done. Well, uh, you're going to have to sit around and look at it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So we've got to put that it's on. Not, it's so not. We can all meet. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to. I think it, uh, Susan can tell us a little more. Exactly what we have to do there for approval, but it has to be reviewed. It has to be reviewed, yes. And there's three or four plans that have to be set down. Everybody has to look at and explain it. You know, I don't know how you'd be able to do it in a committee the whole Not virtually. It would be very difficult to do it virtually. I think. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay. Any further questions? The public works reports. No. Nope. I move the reports as written, Your Worship. I second. Moved by Councillor Pence, seconded by Deputy Mayor Campbell. Um, on the question, I said a question with the water report. Um, for the break on McKenzie Lane, do we have to rip up some payment for that one, Blaine? Yes, we did, yeah. And I just wanted to mention too that Joe Landry has been appointed the overall direct responsible charge for the water treatment plant, and there's a vacancy now in the water treatment plant, and job posting was created. I want to congratulate Joe on the new position. With that said, all those in favor by saying aye. All right. Bye. Contrary minded. Most carried unanimously. Thank you, Blaine. Uh, Thank 5G, you. Sally O'Neill, Active Pixel County. Uh, there she is. Good evening, Your Worship and Council. Um, I just want to begin by saying thank you very much for inviting me to join you at the, at the Council meeting. Um, and I have submitted my report. Um, I'm wondering if you might have any questions about that. And I have a couple of things to update as well. So I'll, um, I'll open it up for questions first. 
Any questions? I just want to note that the Daily Dose of Nature posts on Facebook are viewed by thousands of people. That's great. Great. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, that is actually being, that will be featured actually um, in, by Recreation Nova Scotia in their, in their upcoming um, provincial newsletter as a success story. So we're pretty excited about that. Awesome. Um, I have a couple of additions to the just things that, that a lot's happened in a week since I submitted this. So I just have a couple of things to update you on. Um, one is um, that uh, the partnership with Dream Candy to provide an eight week leadership program um, is beginning on the 18th. And we have, um, we had set an, um, a limit of 10 students. Um, and we are, we're up to eight right now. And those were, um, those participants were directly contacted through service providers. So um, Schools Plus um, recommended people and uh, Dream Candy as well. Um, so we worked directly with service providers to make sure that, um, that those spots went to um, kids that were most in need. Um, and so that's a really exciting program because we are doing it virtually. And this is a new thing for us both, um, but it will be hopefully a, a template for um, more programs to happen in that way. Um, and so it does include um, it does include recreation programming, leadership skills, um, healthy practices, healthy eating, um, and physical activity uh, as. Uh, um, kind of integrated in through the program. And uh, it has uh, direct contact from the leader. So you'll be, so participants will get a weekly actual phone call with their leader. And so for folks, because we were, we were concerned that not everyone has access to the internet. So we use um, a package of materials that are delivered to the child's home and a combination of video and personal calls on the phone. Um, I did want to um, bring to your attention that Highland Connect, um, which uh, the town of Stillerton among all the, the municipalities in Victor County has uh, records on Highland Connect. It's a, it's a, if you're not familiar with it, it's a searchable database um, and it's used province-wide. Uh, it, it's a, it's for um, recreation, um, physical activity um, opportunities. So your facilities would be in there, all your parks would be in there, all your trails, all your ball clubs and bike groups, all of those um, opportunities in your community. Um, Nova Scotia Connect has included information um, on their on all the sites that make it searchable by um, by COVID resources. So families who are looking for opportunities um, un, under the, the the state of emergency can search by um, stay home resources, um, fitness, outdoor, and so provincially they have asked that um, that communities update their records. So I don't know how long it's been since. Uh, Stellarton has opened up those records and made sure they're up to date, but um, I'm interested in working with um, with your staff to make sure that, that those updates are made um, as we know that people are searching for things like that right now specifically. Thank you, Sally. I do know that I did go into the Highland Connect site in November and did some updating at that time as well. So. Super. That's great. Um, the other thing I wanted to let you know is that um, Annually, we've had we've held Bike Week in Pictou County, and the town of Stellarton has had um, representation on that planning committee and been a big part of um, a, a big partner in that event. Um, we have decided that we're still going to do it. Um, so the MPALs have met, and we're reaching out now to our committee. Um, Gina um, was Marky, yeah. Yeah, Marky um, was on our committee last year, and so we would like to invite her back. Um, and uh, so what we're planning is to do um, an info sharing. It will be a virtual bike week. We'll have um, sample itineraries, suggested routes, 
through each community um, contests, information sharing, but and and connecting virtually. So we're kind of excited about that. Sounds great. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention the eight week leadership program for adolescent girls. I think that's a really good idea to go to the service providers to find uh, the candidates for it because the service the service providers always know who needs to help the most. So that's a good, I think it's a good and idea. And they have direct. Yeah, they have direct connection. Um, exactly. I do want to make one little um, correction to that in that um, we did say, although the main target is adolescent girls, we have suggested that it's like our poster um, says to any anyone. So we are accepting anyone. We expect that the nature of the program itself will be most attractive to girls, but any female identified person um, or anyone who's just interested in doing um, that kind of leadership program is invited to attend. So it's not necessarily specifically girls, although um, we hope um, by nature that we serve girls through it. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. <laughs> is, there any further, is there any questions for Sally? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Can I have a motion to accept the report, please? So moved. So moved. So I think that was moved by Councillor Knight, seconded by Councillor Pencil. Was in favor by saying aye. 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 Time to remind it. Most carry Nancy. Thank you very much, Sally. Appreciate your work. Um, five H is a homecoming update from Councillor Knight. Thank you, Your Worship. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm going to read off the report. Vessels require advanced planning. I would like to thank all those who volunteered giving of their time, dedicating to providing enjoyment to the residents and visitors of and to Pictou County. Also, the businesses and organizations for their valued contribution. Thank you to co-chair, Councillor Gary Pence, all who contributed to Stellarton homecoming tradition. It was a pleasure working with the committee. Organizations like our RCAF, Lions, Legion and fire department receive a financial boost, which they pass on. Many look forward to homecoming. Friends, relatives make our festival a time to visit, an occasion where we renew old friendships while catching up on lost family time. To ensure the safety of our attendees at the Saturday night dance, we brought back the Chad bus, which would be held in the Sobeys soccer complex. Last year, we introduced 50s and 60s music at the Legion. This year, Family Day was moved to Wednesday, with Saturday spot filled by Family Sports Day. This is a new event comprised of soap hockey and soap basketball. We added Sunday afternoon music in the park. Bands were booked, security, security administered by Chief Mark Hoback, backed by secure, the security company. Fire Chief uh, Mike Sullivan was overseeing fire regulations as well as the department's participation. Chief Hoback and his wife Cara would take on the trivia night at the RCAF. Dream Candy was taking charge of the preteen dance. The Friday night car show was in place anticipating a huge turnout. Paul Taylor booked nine food trucks. The RCA Association retained seniors lunch along with their delicious pork chop barbecue, not to forget their annual golf tournament. Sunday mor uh, Saturday morning gave way to our firefighters famous pancake breakfast with the firefighters competition scheduled during the week. Lunches were planned by Christ Anglican and Stoughton Presbyterian Church, church service Sunday, and graveside service at Lord's Cemetery. 2020 school reunion to be held at the Nova Scotia Community College. We would open Wednesday with the mayor's con concert in the Allen Park, closing Sunday night with the final fireworks. This year to be put on by local firefighters. Paige Clark was in early stages of contacting sponsors new and old. This year, Paige added a new donation, for, uh, a nice donation from the Kinsman Club. Paige was in the process of laying out a promotion and advertisement campaign, then covert 
19 took precedence. Our committee, our, our homecoming committee was looking forward to this year's event, anticipating a great ex experience. So it is with great disappointment, I must announce, 2020 homecoming is canceled. We feel the health and safety of citizens take priority. Thank you again to our committee, sponsors and organizations. We will see you next year. Be safe in 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Council Knight. That's very sad news, but um, the circumstances, I guess, have, have forced the committee's hand on that. Any comments or questions for Council Knight? No, I just want to say uh, thank you very much, Council Knight and the whole committee. Uh, I've been on the committee before, and it's a lot of work, and uh, it's a sad day when we're not going to have the uh, that uh, homecoming in Stockton. A lot of people come home for this event specifically. I don't know if anybody will be traveling soon, but uh, it's a sad day. But thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Well, I think the entire Council agrees with that sentiment. It's a sad day, but uh, we want to thank Councilor Knight and the entire committee for all their work. Um, item 5I, uh, Davis Day, Councilor Pence. Yes, uh, Your Worship and Council, uh, I have uh, some more bad news. Uh, Davies Day Memorial, I think it is uh, June the 11th, yes, is cancelled. This year, due to the COVID-19, and uh, it's with deep regret that we have to cancel it, but it's a sign of the times. <clears throat> yes, again, it's sad that we have to do that, but uh, like you say, the things that are going on in the world, we don't have much of their choice, and thank you for your work on that committee as well, Councillor Pence. Welcome. Okay, so I think we can move on to item six, correspondence. 6A, Real Canadian Recreation, and thank you for donation. Yes, uh, the town of Stellarton donated uh, through $200 to uh, Real Re Canadian Recreation, uh, and that was under the 2019-20 annual grant budget. Uh, thank you to Tyson for carrying out that uh, project. I think it's a very valuable for the, for the veterans, and, he, and for him to take the list, initiative and leadership on that, we're happy to, to support it. And uh, 6B. Uh, yes, this is from the Office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. Um, over the past month, some public sector bodies have shared concerns about uh, capacity to meet their obligations under, under the Accessibility Act, given the impact of the current COVID-19 situation. The Government of Nova Scotia prescribed municipalities as public sector bodies under the Accessibility Act, effective April 1st, 2020. Under the Act, public sector bodies are required to form an accessibility advisory committee and develop an accessibility plan within one year of prescription date. Uh, please be assured that they recognize the unprecedented challenges facing all Nova Scotians during this time. They will be adjusting the timelines for public sector bodies to ensure that there is sufficient time and capacity to support the development of our accessibility plans and they will show, share further details on the revised timelines once the state of emergency has ended. And uh, they, can, they, thank, uh, they thank us for our continued support and commitment to building an inclusive province for all Nova Scotians. And just so um, the public and council are aware, we do have an um, accessibility advisory committee that has been established. Um, and we are in the process of developing a um, accessibility plan for the town of Stellarton. Uh, which is due or was due April 1st, 2021. But now with this, uh, we're going to see when that is due, but just rest assured that that is being worked on. Okay, thank you for that. Do you need a motion to accept the correspondence or are we okay? For information, yes. So, so a motion or no? Yes, yeah, sorry, a motion please. So move. Second. Second. Go ahead, moved by <laughs> Councillor Pence, seconded by Deputy Mayor Campbell. All those in favor, by saying aye. 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 Time to remind it. Most carried, thank you. Um, item seven, Committee of the Whole Report. The following recommendations are for Council's consideration from the Committee of the Whole meeting held virtually on April 27th, 2020. Recommendation number one. 
On recommendation of Committee of the Whole, Council approved the tender received from SW Weeks Construction for asphalt patching for the amount of $47,236.25. That is including HST. Can we discuss this at the committee? Is there kind of a motion unless there's any, any issues? So moved. Second. I second. Oh, go ahead, Simon. Moved by second. Councilor Knight, seconded by Councilor Wand. All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Motion carried. Thank you. Item A is a resolution. Uh, so this is a resolution number 2020-05-11, and it's for uh, the application that the Town of Stellarton will submit under the Provincial Capital Assistance Program, otherwise known as PCAP. So be it resolved that the town, of, town Council of the Town of Stellarton, that the town clerk and town engineer be authorized to submit an application for projects under the Provincial Capital Assistance Program for the following project in phases for the fiscal year 2020-21. Number one is the Rundle Street, Victoria and Allen Avenue infrastructure renewal project subject to the Provincial Capital Assistance Program. And that is for $1,298,315. Okay, so I'll we discuss this. Got a motion? Yep. I move. I so move. I second. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Penn, seconded by Councillor Law. There's no further discussion. All those in favor of saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried unanimously. Thank you. If, if I may, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. go ahead, Brenda. Brenda? Um, um, I, I'd like to recommend to Council that in the event that uh, the PCAP funding is not approved, uh, that Council approve Rundle Street on its own. Um, and if so, in so doing, the sewer portion of the project for one, Rundle Street own would be funded by gas tax and the water portion would be funded by depreciation. Mm -hmm. Well, could we make, uh, Your Worship, could I make that part of the original motion? Uh, no, because this that PCAP uh, resolution will have to go to the province. This yeah, is so something I move. I move. Okay. I'll second it, Simon. So moved by Councillor Wan, seconded by Councillor Pence. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried unanimously. Thank you, Brenda, for that clarification and input. Yeah, uh, thanks, we, Brenda. Do we have to make a motion on the second part? We did. I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> I just want to be clear. Absolutely. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to the application for a site plan approval, PQ Properties 25 Bunker Hill. Yes, so Council had a public hearing uh, today that began a little late at 525. Um, and so of, in front of them is the uh, approval uh, for their consideration for 25 Bunker Hill to develop a four unit townhouse development. Okay, so we've already had the discussion. Are we ready to go straight to a vote or? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need all those in favor of the development signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying nay. 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 So we have three to one. The, the yay was Council of Juan and the motion is defeated. We can move on to a COVID-19 property tax financing. Yes, yeah, so this is um, something that I would uh, like council to um, approve in principle. Um, this is a policy that is being developed by the province, or I, I say by the whole province in municipalities. Um, so basically in order to qualify for a low interest provincial loan to cover expenses, uh, municipalities have to approve a policy um, allowing people up to 30 months to pay um, this current year's um, tax levy. Uh, many people obviously have taken a financial hit during the pandemic. And however, the municipality still needs tax revenue to pay for services. We still have fire, we still have police, we still have uh, garbage Operation. collection. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this is a tax financing program. It is not tax forgiveness or deferral. Um, the Provincial Association of Municipal Administrators and the Federation of Municipalities, Nova Scotia, recommended a draft policy, which is before you, uh, that would allow people up to 30 months to pay um, under certain conditions. And some, one condition, for example, is that the, the property 
uh, commercial or residential has to be currently in good standing with the town. Um, only those who can prove that their income has been affected by COVID-19 would qualify. Uh, residential properties would only be included if they have a dwelling on them and commercial property owners would have to prove they were not covered by business interruption insurance or um, any of the uh, programs that are offered by the federal government. Uh, Nova Scotia residents, um, as, as, as I mentioned, who taxes are not in arrears would, would qualify. Under the proposal, taxpayers would be charged interest at the municipality's cost of borrowing, which is 1.1%, uh, very, very low rate, plus an additional amount to cover administration of the program. Um, it should be emphasized that residents who can pay uh, should do so uh, to limit the amount of borrowing needed. Um, it, is a, it is a policy that uh, the municipalities within Pictou County are working together, uh, the finance staff from each municipality are working together to kind of um, make it fair. Uh, we don't want one thing being offered in one uh, municipality in Pictou County and not being offered in another. Yes. Um, but this is not something I'm asking council to pass tonight. You need seven days notice on a, fi a final policy. It's just something I want council to accept in principle that yes, if somebody is affected by this COVID-19 and is unable to pay their current year taxes, that we can we can offer them this this um, this program this financing. I, I think it's a great program, Susan. Yes, uh, it is a very good program, yeah. and uh, the Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities have been meeting virtually since April the first, and this has been a very big topic on their agenda. And um, people they, they've been working with the province, and they've worked very very hard to come up with something that would help the municipalities as well as um, as well as people who are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. So, so you want us to... I'm just, it's just a consensus tonight, uh, Councillor yeah. Pence. So what, yeah. what will happen is if council approves this in principle, uh, once the finance staff have come together with a, a, a more final um, policy that reflects the municipalities within Pictou County, this will go to council with a seven day, well, more than a seven day notice yeah. that council can or cannot consider in June. All right. What do you think, your worship? I think it sounds good. I think it's important that uh, Pictou County, especially the same, um, the same policy across six units, if at all possible. Yeah, um, so that's what I like about it. Yeah. Me too. And the clerk and the and our finance staff are working on that. So I think we can, uh, I'll go with approving in principle at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with that. I'm good I'm with cool. that. I, I yeah. approve. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Yep. And so council wants to say yes. I think we're all good with it. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very Great. much. So as soon as that policy is uh, drafted, I will send to council for their consideration. I got a few. <laughs> so we'll move on to the next item. Yes, uh, number 11 on the agenda is the bids received for Stellarton Memorial Rink. So as per the email sent to council on April 22nd, uh, council approved approaching local rinks uh, to see if they were interested in anything from the Stellarton Memorial Rink before going public. Um, and uh, those items uh, that are before you um, are what was uh, presented and I can certainly share that with um, the public here once I get it up. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if there's any questions here. Um, Blaine, the town engineer, met with, um, met with them and that's the bids that came forward. I'm gonna share my screen. So the, the items we had were rubber mats and ice edger. There we go. Yeah. So. Set of exit doors, net, uh, net mesh, with bumpers and Venray chairs. So as you can see here, I apologize that it's not, uh, but this is, this is as good as it's gonna get. So the Hector Arena, they have bid $300 on rubber mats. The Thorburn Arena bet, uh, sorry, bid 501. Um, with regards to the Ice Edger, the Thorburn Arena bid 251 and the Westville bid 400. Uh, the set of exit doors looks like we are with the Westville at 400. The nets, 
uh, Thorburn, 1,202. Uh, Trenton Arena, 1,000. Uh, Net Mesh with bumpers is Trenton Arena, 200. And Venray Chairs, Trenton Arena, 100. What's a Venray chair? Uh, just the, the plastic chairs that are in the, uh, they're in the, the cellar. Oh, so there's an, a number of them. There's just, I'm not sure, uh, Blaine, if you can let me know how many there are for $100. I'm not sure. Just curious. Use, they were looking for 50. 50 chairs. Okay, thank you. So that's Those are just, I just wanted to add, these are some of those, just the smaller items that are in there. And there's other, uh, we have a used equipment tender out for sale, which some of the bigger items like Zamboni and the glass and are, are in that. So that's separate from this. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that clarification. I think it's pretty straightforward, the bidding. It looks like we just take the high bids. Everything's been bid on that we can, I think it's straightforward. Does anyone have any problems with what's on the sheet there? No, I make a motion. We go with the high, uh, give it to the highest bidder. Okay. Seconder. May I ask a quick question? Just wait till I get a seconder. Do I have a seconder? Yeah, I seconded Danny. Okay, moved by Councilor Knight, nice seconded by Councilor Pence. Go ahead, Sally. Um, were there helmets or community lending um, um, equipment for community borrowing? There was helmets there, I know that. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a hockey bag called a used helmets up there. I don't know if they're expired or, or what. But, uh, so um, I'd like to talk to somebody with that um, at a later time because um, we are, as a, as a community, all the recreation departments looking at a, um, an equipment loan program. So okay. the, those might be put to good use. Okay. Absolutely. We'll Excellent. Thank you, Sally. Yeah, yeah there was hel the helmets there, Blaine, were there for the uh, use when people were, uh, came in skating and they didn't have a helmet. Yeah. They were owned by the rink. There is some minor there's, hockey equipment up there too. I don't know what the bat, if there's anything of use up there. Something. Well, maybe Sally, you could take Sally in there, uh, uh, Blaine, and let her have a look at this equipment. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Any further discussion on the question? Okay, all those in favor of saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Most carried answer. Thank you very much. Uh, next council meeting is Monday, June 8th. Uh, it's going to be virtual again uh, via Zoom at 5.30 p.m. So we'll see you again then. And if I have a motion to adjourn, please. So move. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, Councillor Pence. Okay.